Hi everyone. Today we're going to go through and look at equivalent fractions. And we're going to use that to simplify fraction, mixed numbers and improper fractions. So we're going to change between those types of numbers. First of all, I have a challenge for you today. How many ways can you colour one eighth of this pretty picture I made? Now you may recall from uh, previously that you can represent a half in many ways. So you can, that's a half, that's a half and that's a half. And you can analyze this using what we call fraction walls. So in this fraction wall, a hole is the whole length there. And we can cut this hole into two parts to get a half. And we could also get a half by taking two quarters or taking three of the six or four eighths or five tenths or six twelfths. So we can represent half in many ways. Let's analyze this a little bit further. How many equal sections have I cut each of these pictures in? So the first one I cut into two, the second one four, and the next one eight, and the last one I've cut into 16 little pieces. So they're all equal pieces. How many of them are blue? The first one's one, second one's two, four, and eight. So I can write the fractions like a half, two over four, three over four over eight, or eight over 16. So are these fractions equal? While well, looking at the diagram, yes, they are. So we call these equivalent fractions. How do you get from one fraction to the next? Let's have a look at our fractions and let's see if we can find how we did that. So from a half to two over four, we multiply the denominator and the numerator by two. From two over four to four over eight, we did the same thing because two times two is four and four times two is eight. And then from four over eight to eight over 16, what did we do? Four times what is eight? Again, we multiply the top and bottom by two. So to get equivalent fraction, we can see that we have to multiply top and bottom numbers by the same number. Let's look at a third. Well, how many pieces did I cut this, each of these pictures by? Well, I'll cut the first one by three, the next one by nine, and I'll save you from counting. I cut the last one into 36 little boxes. And I've colored the top picture one, one, piece, I've colored three pieces of the second image and I've colored 12 pieces of the third image and they all look the same. Fraction wise it's a third, three over nine and 12 over 36. Are they equivalent? Yes. Looking at the fractions we can't really tell but looking at the pictures we can see that they're equivalent fractions. How do you get from one fraction to the next? So let's check. Well, 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. So we multiply by 3 to go from that first fraction into that middle fraction. But how do we get to the last fraction? How, what did, you, did I multiply 3 to get to 12? And is that the same number as 9 going to 36? Yes, it is. So we multiply the top and bottom by 4. So in summary, if we multiply the top number and the bottom number by the same number, we're going to get an equivalent fraction. So we can also look at it in reverse. 4 over 10 is the equivalent to what? Well, 10 divided by what becomes 5? The answer is 2. So if I divide the top by 2, will I get the equivalent fraction? Let's have a look at the diagram. So, so these two diagrams look exactly the same. So they are equivalent fractions and we have 4 over 10 and 2 over 5. So we can do the reverse as well. So we can divide top and bottom number to get equivalent fractions as well. So to find an equivalent fraction, you multiply the numerator, the top number, and the denominator, oops, the bottom number, by the same number. So let's do an example. Remember, to find equivalent fractions, you can multiply by any number you want. So we can multiply 2 over 5 by 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 5 times 2 is 10. And then that gives us an equivalent fraction of 4 over 10. Well, we could have multiplied by 6 if we wanted to. 2 times 6 is 12, 5 times 6 is 30. Or we can even multiply by a crazy number like 24. So 2 times 24 is 48 and 5 times 24 is 120. As long as whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. So let's try this example. So 
3 times 1 is 24. Well, 3 times 8 is 24. So we multiply the top to get an equivalent fraction. So 2 times 8 is 16. So these are equivalent fractions. Let's try another example. 1 over 5. So, well, this one's an easy one because 1 times 1 is 9. That's just 9. So we multiply the bottom by 9. 5 times 9 gives us 45. Simplifying fraction is the opposite. Instead of multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number, you divide it until you can't divide it anymore. You can divide by a common factor only. Unlike going up where you multiply by any number, when you go down, shrinking the number, they have to fit. Otherwise, you're going to get an ugly decimal. So simplify the fraction 12 over 30. Well, we know that 12 and 30 are divisible by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 30 divided by 3 is 10. But then when we get 4 over 10, we notice that they're both even numbers, so they're both divided by 2. So we can divide the top by 2 to get 2, and we can divide 10 by 2 to get 5. We get to our answer. So you can keep doing that until you can't do it anymore. So 2 and 5, there's no more that you can simplify. So 4 and 12 are both divisible by 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So we get a third. Let's try it a different way. 4 and 12. Well, if you thought that they're both even numbers, you can divide the top and bottom by 2. Um, so that becomes 4 divided by 2 is 2, and then 12 divided by 2 is 6. So you're going to get 2 over 6. Well, if you do it this way, you'll notice that, hang on, they're both even again, so I can divide by 2 again, and now I get 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So I get a third. Oh, ignore those extra, divide by 2. So you can do that. You can do the two steps, or you can go and do it in a single step. It doesn't matter. You'll still get to the same answer. you still get to a third. So if you can think of the highest common factor between these two, which is 4, you'll do it in one step. But if not, you'll end up doing it in two steps, which is also fine. Let's try this. 20 and divided by what is 4? Well, divided by 5 is 4, so we have to divide the top by the same number and we get 3. 15 over 20 is the same as 3 quarters. Let's try another example. 32 divided by what is 4? Well, 32 divided by 8 is 4, so we have to divide the bottom by the same number, and now we get 5. Now, what happens when we get mixed numbers? Well, if we get mixed numbers, we completely ignore the 7, because we're not simplifying the 7, we're just simplifying the fraction part. So we completely ignore the 7. So 20 divided by what is 4? 20 divided by 5 is 4. So we divide the top. So you can see that 15 over 20 becomes 3 over 4, and we do nothing to the whole number. So this is the same example as before. So 32 divided by what is 4? Divide by 8, and you do the same for the denominator. And again, you do nothing to the whole number. You leave it there. Have a go at these questions. You can pause the video and then look at the answers in a second. So 18 divided by, sorry, 18 over 30, uh, 18 and 30, the highest common factor I can think of is 6. So I divided top and bottom by 6, and I get 3 over 5. 18 and 81, they're both divisible by 9. So 18 divided by 9 is 2, 81 divided by 9 is 9, and we get our answer. Oops, forgot the equal signs. 21 and 56, they are both divisible by... 7. So divide the top by 7, divide the bottom by 7, and we get 3 over 8. 24 and 84. This is a big number. So divide the top by 12 and divide by bottom by 12, because that's the highest common factor. But remember, if you can't think of that, you can divide the top and bottom by 2, and keep doing that until you can't find any more numbers that fit in both of them. And we get 2 over 7. Let's look at improper fraction. So 7 over 2 is when we have 7 little pieces 
that are halves. And we can change this into a mixed number. So this is an improper fraction where the top number is bigger. Now we can change it into a mixed number. We can see here that there are three and a half. So we write three and a half. So how do we go from improper to mixed number? To do so, we counted how many holes we had. So we had seven divided by two gives us one, two, three with the remainder of one. So we divide the seven divided by two to get three and we had a remainder of one piece. That is how many pieces out of two we have left. So let's do another example. Convert this into mixed numbers. So you divide the numerator by the denominator, so 10 divided by 6, and we get 1, remainder 4. So we can write 1 as your whole number, and the remainder becomes the top number of your fraction. So we have 10 over 6 is equal to, where can I write this? Um, so 1 is your whole number and 4 over 6, 4 is the numerator of your fraction. We can simplify it, but we'll skip it for now. So let's try this. 15 over 4. So 15 divided by 4 is, how many times does 4 fit, fit into 15? 4, 8, 12. So it fits 3. So 3 times 4 is 12. Now 12, 15, Take away 12, we have 3 left. So therefore, the remainder is 3, which is 3 over 4. Let's try the next number. 29 divided by 6. So let's count my 6s. 6, 12, 18. We have to go a little bit further now. 24, 30. Oh, went too fast. So just 24. So that is 4. We're going to get a 4. So 4 times 6 is? 4 times 6 is 24, so 29 take away 24, we have a remainder of 5. So we have 5 over 6 as a fraction part. Well, we can change mixed number and change it into improper fraction this time. So we can go backwards as well. How do we do that? Well, let's have a think. So we want to go from 3 to 7. How do we do that? So if we take the 3 and we multiply by how many halves we have, so there's 3 halves, so that's 6, and then we add the number on top, 1, 6 plus 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 plus 1, we're going to get the 7 we wanted. So to go from mixed number into improper fractions, we have to multiply the whole number by the size of the pieces, 3 times 2 to get 6 and add the remainder 1. So let's try 2 and 3 over 5. So we go 2 times 5, so we multiply, which is 10. And then we add the top value, which is 13. 13 over 5. Let's try the following questions and pause the video and check the answers when you're ready. So converting to mixed numbers. So how many sixes fit in 11? 6, 12. So there's only one that fits. And 11 take away 6. We have 5 left over. So 5 over 6 as our fraction. 8 and 12 over 8. So how many 8s fit into 12? 8 fits only once. So again, 1. But then 8 times 1 is 8, so 12 take away 8, we have 4 left over, so our remainder 4 goes over there. And don't forget that you should always simplify where you, you can. 4 over 8 is the same as half. How do we convert this into improper fraction? So we're going the other way. Again, we multiply and then we add. So 4 times 5 is 20, 20 plus 3 is 23. And then for the last one, again, multiply, then add. So 3 times 9 is 27, plus 2 is 28, 29.
Alpha 9. All right, bye.